the second presentation is uh, edges, surfaces, and spaces of action in the 21st century uh, urban environments, connectivities, and awareness in the city, uh, presented by Patri uh, Ms. Patricia Makina. Uh, would you please make a presentation in about 20 minutes? And uh, we will go into the short discussion after that. Please go ahead. Yes, hello and welcome. This presentation is entitled Edges, Surfaces, and Spaces of Action in 21st Century Urban Environments, Connectivities and Awareness in the City. My name is Patricia McKenna, and I'm with Ambient Ease in Canada. This work is an initiative of the Urbanities Lab, which I founded in 2015 and through which I conduct urban research. I am pleased and excited to be sharing this work with you today at the 12th International Human Choice and Computer Conference here at the University of Salford in Manchester. Very briefly, um, in this work, I will touch upon the key parts of the paper from the introduction to the theoretical perspective, to the methodology, findings and discussion, contributions, and conclusion. By way of introduction, in terms of background, the rapid urban growth that is occurring globally is a key motivator for this work. And um, this, is, this, uh, this growth is posing unprecedented challenges and opportunities for society and for education. In response, this work looks at how awareness in social media infused and technology rich urban environments may be influencing choice and contributing to more meaningful engagement and learning. In response to the conference themes, this paper seeks to moderate and balance technology and coercion concerns with infrastructural elements for awareness, choice and action in the city. In terms of context, this paper is significant because it theorizes and explores cities in terms of awareness and the experience of the city life in relation to choice and the emerging understandings of the interweaving of the physical and digital. And these are environments that are increasingly accommodating pervasive and aware technologies. So this is particularly important at this time when nearly 100% of people in the UK are said to be oblivious to the growth of smart cities around them. The purpose of this work then is to introduce a philosophical and phenomenological theoretical perspective, drawing on the work of Casey on surfaces and edges, along with human geography and urbanism perspectives on spaces and this is intended to complement, enrich, and extend algorithmic and network views of social media in the city. Theoretically, this work is situated at the intersection of social media in support of aware people and information and communication technologies as aware technologies being used as a strategy by cities to make themselves smarter. Constructs under exploration in this work include edges, surfaces, spaces, and the in-between, and a review of the literature from an interdisciplinary perspective is provided. For example, Lynch speaks of edges in an urban context in relation to attention and experience, where surfaces and edges are said to be important for continuity fostering conversation and interaction. Gell speaks of edge effects, while Casey speaks of, um, well, he, he maintains that in the midst of any activity, we are in between edges. And from a human geography perspective, Levy speaks of space in terms of immaterial vectors, such as the internet as a kind of, um, new kind of space. And so it is important to consider these four constructs in the context of a review of the literature on awareness, infrastructure, and experience. 
For example, Orlikowski speaks of awareness, but crucially um, states that it's also important to include choice and action. And Dowerage and Bell speak of an infrastructure of experience and the experience of infrastructure. So, um, as such, this work develops a conceptual framework for awareness, choice, and action in 21st century urban spaces, consisting of aware people, technologies, and cities, focusing on information and communication technologies and social media, guided by the constructs of edges, surfaces, spaces, and the in-between, focusing on awareness, experience, and infrastructure. Exploration of the research questions for this study is conducted in terms of connectivities and awareness involving choice and action. This work gives rise to three research questions. And I state them here, and I will pick them up later in this presentation because they will be reformulated into propositions that will be explored. The research design for this study consisted of an exploratory case study approach in small to medium to large cities, mostly in Canada, but also extending to Europe, specifically Finland. This is a cross-sector study, including community members, educators, students, city officials, and business. And a minimally viable city-focused social media web space is used. Quantitative and qualitative data were collected using multiple methods of data collection, including web activity and interview. And interviews focused on use experience, content creation, and questions about smart cities and aware cities. In terms of data analysis, content analysis was used for, for um, qualitative data and descriptive statistics for quantitative. And anecdotal evidence was gathered in parallel with this study through group and individual discussions across multiple sectors in the cities of Victoria and Toronto. And so this work is based on a small N of 16. And demographically, responses were received from 55% males and 45% females, spanning age ranges of people in their 20s to their 70s. So the research questions reformulated as propositions are as follows. In contemporary urban environments, edges, surfaces, spaces, and the in-between contribute to greater awareness in relation to choice. Proposition two, social media and other aware technologies contribute to emerging understandings of urban infrastructure, fostering opportunities for action and choice. Proposition three, the experience of evolving urban infrastructures contributes to greater connectivities in support of greater awareness, influencing choice and actions. So this table highlights the importance of connectivities and awareness for choice and action in the city. Proposition one encompassing edges, services, spaces, and the in-between contributes to all four elements. Proposition two, encompassing social media and aware technologies also was found to contribute to all four elements, as was Proposition 3, encompassing urban infrastructures such as mobility, public spaces, and um, multi-purposefulness. Now, in their own voices, here is a glimpse of some of the things that people said a city councillor commented that it is important to think of technology as a tool that allows us to have a safer, more vibrant city. A community member in Toronto stated that you have so many different choices of getting from point A to point B, depending on the weather, the traffic, who you are with. An educator suggested let's spend less time finding the connection and more time actually making it. So this is just a glimpse of some of the things. 
So kind of activities such as talking and interaction enabled by urban spaces were found to extend to other technology enabled urban spaces. And awareness um, by engaging people in discussions of social media, the use of social media and other aware technologies in the city revealed high levels of interest interactivities and engagement, and this has implications for smarter cities. This work sheds light on urban edges, spaces, and surfaces for action and choice in terms of the importance of human awareness, choice, and action involving the use of aware ICTs, pointing to the interweaving continuum of the physical and the digital or the immaterial. So as such, all three propositions are supported. This work is significant in several ways. First, this work contributes to the research literature across multiple domains, including awareness, choice, and smart cities. Second, a conceptual framework is developed, operationalized, and advanced um, for, um, for awareness in smart cities. As such, this framework offers a perspective on connectivities and awareness, featuring an interweaving of aware people using aware technologies as a way of possibly mitigating techno effects and concerns with the choice or coercion dilemma. Future directions for practice and research in terms of awareness, choice, and action emerge um, from the alternative view of the concepts presented here. So for practice, this fosters possibly the potential for choice and action in urban environments. And in combining aware people with aware technology use, opportunities emerge for initiatives fostering more meaningful engagement, learning, and participation. Future directions identified for research include use of the conceptual framework as a tool that can benefit from further use, testing, and development, possibly opening the way for new approaches and opportunities. And research on awareness and choice in smart cities contributes to opportunities for further development of contemporary urban theory and associated evolving discourse spaces. Challenges of this work center around small sample size, and this is, this is mitigated by in-depth interviews yielding rich, de uh, rich detail from a diversity of individuals across age ranges, sectors, and small to medium to large size cities, and anecdotal evidence from in-depth group and individual discussions. Another challenge presented was the, the minimally viable city-focused web space component of this study. And this was mitigated by an opportunity to provide more background and detail during, in -depth deta uh, during the in-depth interviews. So in conclusion, through the use of uh, edges, surfaces, and spaces lens from an interdisciplinary perspective, this work highlights the importance of fostering awareness among people about smart cities and technologies. And it extends urban edge, space, and surface theorizing to encompass social media, internet, and other aware spaces for enhancing connectivities and awareness for action and choice in the city. A key takeaway from this work is the importance of people as forming part of the critical infrastructure in smart cities. This highly interwoven dynamic of people, technologies, and cities enabled by connectivities and awareness gives way to the potential for more balanced approaches for action and choice. Voices from diverse sectors are shared in this paper and as such, this work will appeal to a broad audience including urban planners and developers, 
awareness researchers, city officials, educators, and really anyone concerned with innovating infrastructures in support of vibrant, sustainable, and livable cities. I thank you so much for your attention and interest, and I welcome your comments and questions. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's go into the uh, question, uh, Q&A session. Uh, if you have uh, some comments or questions, uh, please raise your hand. Okay. Hello, uh, I'm Simon Rogerson. I've, I found your talk very interesting. Um, one of the things I'd like you to perhaps expand upon is how the, the idea of a smart city, which sounds fascinating, um, can be safeguarded in, in a way that it doesn't become an Orwellian 1984 smart city. Um, I think, I think this, this is a very good question, and I think this is what I'm trying to get at um, you know, in this work is... Um, increasing the awareness of people about smart cities, engaging people in discussions about, um, you know, what a smart city is. One of the people I cite in this work is Cohen. And Cohen speaks of three waves or three generations of smart cities. The first wave, he claims, was all about technology. The second wave included cities and, uh, you know, open data and so on. And, and Cohen claims that we're now in the third wave, and he refers to this as co-creation, where people in cities are involved. And uh, in fact, he says that this third wave encompasses all three, it's technology, it's cities, and it is people. Um, and so I think that the more we involve people, um, because people are so incredibly creative, the 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 um, complex you know issues that are emerging in cities. The more people that are involved, the more we can we can come to solutions possibly. Um, you said that uh, what part of your thesis was that social media um, enhances people's ability to understand the smart city, the, you said specifically, the infrastructure of the cities and, and what goes on underneath them. And I really am dubious about that. I tend to think that social media covers a lot of these changes. So could you give me one example each from your 17-year-old person and your 70-year-old person for each of those, how social media enabled them to better understand the way in which a local government was run by smart facilities? Um, one example which I found very interesting was, was a city councillor here in the city of Victoria, Canada. And, and so when I spoke with him, he was extremely cautious about technology. He felt that technology has its place and it's it's very separate and distinct from, from people interacting with each other. Uh, and as we talked, it turned out that very recently, the city had, um, the city had conducted what he called an e-town hall. And um, you know, one of his concerns was how it's very difficult to, pe to, to engage people, to get people to come to city hall. And so through this e-town hall, it was revealed that um, um, the E-Town Hall enabled all sorts of people to attend this meeting. And people began uh, to Twitter um, you know, about the meeting during the meeting. Um, they began to um, um, share information with each other. They began to give the city feedback about particular issues that were being discussed during the town hall. And so it turned out that this, this kind of, you know, combining of technology with physical meeting spaces, it turned out to be a much, you know, a much richer experience for the city and for people in the city. And subsequently, I spoke with, um, you know, information technology people in the city, and they were quite excited about this because they said 
it generated new kinds of data sets that the city was able to um, start working with and exploring how it could use this information in beneficial ways. I hope that responds in part to your question. The question was, the question was primarily, um, that's wonderful that the excitement got generated, but you said that this helped them understand the infrastructure, but your example just said, well, it gave the council more data that they could take off into their chambers privately and discuss and evaluate and do something with. And I don't see how that behind the chamber's use of the data helped the population understand what was going on. Um, well, the thing is that when, when people were commenting, their comments were public. And, um, and what, what's happening is that the city, um, you know, will, will respond and immediately um, uh, also through social media indicated that, you know, this was something that was expressed as a concern and this is what the city um, is proposing to do about it. And, and that further garners um, response from people. Um, and, and I'm also, you know, just giving, um, some small early kinds of examples here because I think this is, um, you know, an emerging, evolving area and there are lots of, um, you know, concerns and issues. Uh, but I think the more that people are involved, the more we can navigate, um, uh, you know, beneficial directions. Uh, uh, I would like to ask you about the difference between the social media. I mean that the there are many kind of social media now, and I suppose uh, they are uh, different in nature, each other. And I, I suppose uh, I felt from your former discussions, uh, you were thinking about Twitter or something like that mainly, but uh, if you have any uh, view on the characteristics of social medias, uh, I, I would like to ask your uh, opinion or uh, point of view. Um, I'm speaking of social media mm. in very broad terms. Broad terms. And I'm speaking of social media as an evolving um, kind of thing. Uh, it's changing daily. Um, the, the examples that I use in this paper are... Um, you know, Twitter, for example, um, where, um, you know, during a conference event, a speaker might have a Twitter background where people who aren't physically at the conference are um, accessing the conference in some way and tweeting about it. Um, and, um, and so that extends the space of the conference uh, possibly globally, uh, this, the same kind of thing was happening in the E-Town Hall, you know, with city officials where that space was being extended by video connection and people were tweeting about it. Um, they may also have been using Facebook um, and spaces like that. Um, so each, each, each person I, I speak with maybe speaking to me about some different type of social media uh, tool or space. Uh, okay, uh, I thought uh, you have some uh, focused image to uh, your using the social media, but uh, I, I understood that uh, any kind of social media uh, could be good for uh, improving co connectivities, right? Right. And so what I'm trying to get at also is um, the use of technology to enhance 
our interaction and our communication. Um, in terms of, you know, the city and urbanism, um, you know, attracting people to public spaces is an excellent form of interaction and communication. But what happens when we introduce technology? What happens when, you know, technology becomes more and more pervasive, um, you know, through embedded, um, you know, technologies, aware technologies, and also social media technologies, where, where most people on the street are now carrying some kind of mobile device? Okay, I see. Thank you. Thank you very much. The supposed, supposed session time is over. Uh, thank you for your presentation, and thank you for your cooperation of all of you. Thanks very much. Thank you so much. Okay, the session is finished. Thank you very much.